Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Rachel. Hi. Hello. Rachel, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Oh, crikey. That sounds like a, a really awkward start to um, a job interview. I, <laughs> but here goes. I'm, um, I am a 42-year-old um, mum. I'm a, a runner. I ride. I ride quite a lot too, spend a lot of time outdoors um, and I write books and the books that I've written, I've had two books published so far, they've both been non-fiction um, and they're about my own experiences of, of mental health issues and the way that being out, uh, being active and amongst nature and discovering that side of myself has kind of helped to put those demons to um, to bed and that's happened over a period of about 10-15 years. Um, I spent quite a lot of time in my 20s on a combination of uh, mental health meds and alcohol um, and there was a big changing point for me when I had my daughter um, that involved a girl of running the London Marathon in 2011 um, and ever since that time it's been kind of a, a, an onward journey um, and a a very big nutshell that's me <laughs> you know what's interesting is a lot of people talk about like why do people always drink in their 20s or so and it's like because honestly it's when you really i would say like a push and pull kind of divide between a person's self like me being in my 20s i started to realize like oh everybody goes out drinking because there's nothing else to really do i mean as a kid, you're coming out of school thinking that you're going to be like president of the United States or you're going to be like something like crazy, like, you know, you're going to have your whole life set. You never have to worry about bills. You're going to be a billionaire. You're going to have Benzes. You're going to have all these fancy cars. And then you realize life isn't like that at all. And you're like, hold on a second. I'm working so much. It's life's a little bit too stressful. And that's where like drinking kind of turns into this like event where it's like I can still be social. And then also it kind of gets me through the day. And then but that leads into addiction where it comes into the fact of like, then you're just counting the minutes and hours so you can go and have a beer or you can go and get drunk or something. And it's, it sucks because like I'm 22, but I see all my friends going out and partying. And a lot of the times they're sitting there all day miserable. And I'm like, you don't want that. I mean, I get why it's the fix, but mental health is this issue that is severely taking over. I think the whole world now um, with the amount of, I believe that, we seem like we've been a little bit lied to by a lot of things. And at the same time, it seemed like life was going to be this miraculous thing. You always hear about, I wish I could go back to being a kid before I knew what, yeah. bill, before I knew what bills were. Yeah. It's so weird. And as a mother, um, like for you, for instance, like you can understand how fearful it is on the aspect of your, don't want your kids to ever suffer. And yeah. I think, sorry to interrupt you, Robbie, because I think you make, really many very very interesting points and um, the first one just to pick up um for me is my story doesn't really hinge on alcoholism so from the perspective of yeah i totally agree with you that in that place of lostness which is a word that i've kind of used to describe um some of my own experience it felt as though my life kind of had no particular direction, although from the from the outward um, perspective, it seemed as though everything was going well. Um, it seemed as though everything was in order. You know, I was pursuing a legal career. Um, I was doing quite well in, in terms of kind of ticking the boxes. Um, you know, I'd, I'd been to law school, I'd graduated, um, you know, I'd, I'd secured a, a, a position in, in a, a in a, a city law firm um, so my life from the outside looked to be going in, in a really good direction but inside I was really lost so it was kind of the disparity between how things looked to other people and how my life felt to be from my perspective so um, even though so yeah I can't hang this thing on it wasn't so much that I kind of suffered from you know alcoholism in in the sense of that being my issue it was kind of that was one example of, that was symptomatic of being in this place where I wasn't quite sure who I was and who I wanted to be at that time and I think my way of dealing with that was to kind of 
just carry on because we're all busy and you just carry on with your day job and you carry on with your, your life and you go on and you, you do crazy things like you get married and you know you shouldn't and you, life rolls on but all throughout there's like a decade of of just being really quite lost um, and not knowing really what to do about that that's really comforting that you say that though because that's kind of what i was experiencing I'm i guess i'm still kind of experiencing it i mean like i was talking about the fact of like we're you have these unrealistic expectations put on you from when you're yeah. a kid saying that you can kind of become anything. And then like, depending on what generation you're born in, like my generation, a lot of the parents are trying to invest themselves in their kids, making sure they don't make the same mistakes. But this is each generation is different than the one before it. So it's like, we're not going to make those same mistakes, but it's just that safety net at being a, a parent or something. You want to make sure that your kid's not doing the same mistakes you did. You want to give them the advice you would if you someone asked you, hey, if I could send you back into your 15-year-old self with all the information you have now. That's the kind of what the idea is. But being lost, it's it's not fun. It's like being in the middle of the woods and you don't know where north, south, east, or west is. It's like, where do I go? What is my journey? What is my purpose? Do I mean anything? And when you start getting in that mindset, you really can throw yourself off. And I think when everyone starts doing this job, this routine, this comfortability thing, that's the biggest issue. I try my hardest in my life to make sure I'm in uncomfortable positions all the time because yeah. I believe that is an issue of mine that I need to fix. Why would I consider anything being uncomfortable? This is the life I've, I, I'm living. So when you put yourself in a position where you're like, I don't want to do that because that makes me uncomfortable. Well, why does it make you uncomfortable? Why, why, why is there that feeling that comes on when you're uncomfortable? And I try and my best to understand perspectives of people when you're listening to a lot of parents talk about like having this empathy for their kids and trying to understand that not having kids of my own. It's, it's a, it's this weird conglomerate of understanding and perspectives that I think the world needs to kind of pay attention to a little bit. Not, yeah. really, not, not really about like me understanding, you know, everything that's going to happen in your life and trying to experience it for myself, but more like, Oh, I can see why you think that way. A little bit more yeah. of communication and stuff is mental health. The issue is here is that it's becoming much more known with the fact that how more people are getting it every single day. Like back in the day, it wasn't this huge thing. It would be like, just get over it or something unless you had PTSD. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, I think on the, on the point that you've, <clears throat> that you've, that you've just made, made, which is again, is an interesting one about the discomfort. And about putting yourself into places that, that are uncomfortable. Um, I think that is something that has defined the last decade and a half. And that's where so much of my learning has come from. It's, it's been choosing, <clears throat> excuse me, it's been choosing to put myself in those places of discomfort as a, as a way of kind of expanding my own uh, boundaries and the comfort zone that kind of held me trapped. And I think there's a big difference between feeling uncomfortable because inherently you feel as though you're in the wrong place, which was kind of where I was before during the, the you know that episode episode in, in my twenties. That's very different to the kind of experience of of choosing to challenge yourself and put yourself in in, in deliberately vulnerable you know positions and places where you 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 may fail, you might take a risk and, and it may not work, but in doing that it's a choice and it's a way to to grow and to develop because you're choosing like like you say to put yourself in the position of challenging yourself and maybe kind of redefining the redefining the boundaries um that you previously thought existed around yourself um so i think for me there's kind of a there are two kinds of discomfort one was because i was in a place that i hadn't I'd kind of drifted into this place of, you know, going down this legal career and, you know, ticking the boxes that perhaps other people had expected or wanted for me and expected my life to be happy in that, in that sense. And that was a, a tick box exercise. If, if, you know, if Rachel gets in this career, if she passes these exams, if she gets married to this lovely person, if she does all these things, then she will be happy. Well, that didn't work. So I think for me, it was kind of challenging my um, 
my own ideas and my own preconception of, of my own boundaries and that began and that's where running helped me because I began to challenge this kind of label that I wasn't a sporty person I began to challenge this label that I couldn't do it it wasn't for me um you know I wasn't athletic it wasn't a, a thing that I could take part in and that began an, a series of other challenges and me putting myself in places of discomfort that then expanded my boundaries and expanded my comfort zone to incorporate many many other things and life became bigger and life became richer because of because of doing that so I think in terms of opting in to the discomfort and choosing to kind of go there it helped me in a way to realize there was more to me than I than I thought there was <laughs> Yeah, well, if you look at comfortability, I like to look at it like comfortability means complacent, it means you're happy of where you're at. You don't want to ever expand out. You don't want to ever do anything. Well, your life is never going to change if you just stay in this routine 24 7 over and over again. And I like to analyze, like, let's see, look back in school. I was deathly afraid of getting in front of people. I could crack jokes in the back of class to be the class clown, uh, but it didn't really go as well as I would say. Um, I was afraid to take any shot that would happen to do with anything with being on stage um, just because yeah. of the fear and anxiety. It's like a little demon, you know, it's sitting in the back of your head, like, don't do it. Everyone's going to make fun of you, all this type of stuff. And then eventually you get out of high school and you realize all these people you think are going to be intimate into your life forever that you're going to see every day, like you do in class or something. You never see them once. And then it's like, hold on a second. What was I so afraid of that I was going to be made fun of? And that would, that's a big thing is bullying, but it's also needed too, because that pushed me into my fitness life. I joined the gym my junior year of high school, and I've been going every single day and haven't missed a day for eight years. And I've talked about it enough to where people are like, oh my God, he's talking about this again. But it's the <laughs> factor of, you know, trying to understand everybody's got a different fix. Everybody's got something that gets them through the crease of stress relief. Running, for instance, creates a thing called a runner's high, which is a, basically an overload of hormones and this chemical that goes into your brain, much like serotonin when you're eating food. It's why food can become an addiction. Oh my God. I mean, I'll be so stressed out before a workout. Like right before we did this podcast, you messaged me, hey, when, are we still doing this thing? I was working out. Okay. I work at a gym. Yeah. I, that's that's my thing. First thing I do immediately in front of the day before I can even talk to people because without it, I'm like I'm like a dog with a treat on its nose. Like, when am I going to get this? When, when am I going to get this done? Because it's like checking your phone. There's this thing that connects to it where it's considered my stress relief. Now, everybody's completely different. Everybody's got their own avenue. If you like sitting and watching birds, if you like playing chess, if you like building Ikea furniture, y'all, everybody's got something. The issue is when I talk about uncomfortability is the fact that people don't take shots because they're afraid of either the failure or they're yeah. afraid of trying something and then it not working out or being made fun of or being embarrassed. This huge thing, you know, they do something in public or they take a shot and then someone just starts talking trash on them on social media has created this biggest wall of complacency where you're seeing millennials that stay at their house until they're in their thirties that you don't, you don't. I try my best to be uncomfortable in so many areas in my life because I try my best to understand everybody's perspective. If I go out somewhere and I'm like, I don't, I don't know any of these people, I'm uncomfortable. We'll get to know some people. Then you won't be uncomfortable. Eliminate that feeling because that uncomfortability is actually pretty good. It's showing you that what you've been doing for so long and so afraid to take a shot for might be holding you back from one of your biggest goals. Yeah. But what it does as well, it gives you, when you take those baby steps to overcome whatever the fear is, you know, yours, you know, may have been, you, you know, you're in the class and, you know, every, every, well, a lot of kids experience, they're worried what the peers think of them. We all have that. But whatever your fear is, when you start to take the tiny steps to overcome that fear, on the other side of the fear, is the reward on the other side of the of the step is the reward of that feeling of euphoria because you've made it because you have you've proven to yourself that whatever that fear was doesn't it either doesn't exist or it's um 
it is overcomable or it's something that you have not allowed yourself to be held back because of so you are bigger than it and i think there's a big thing of um just every day taking a step or some steps to challenge yourself to do those tiny things and they needn't be big things but they can um build up to you becoming a person that now runs and, and delivers a, a podcast where you've got the confidence to have your voice and to talk about the things that are relevant and that are interesting to you and to many other people that being from the kid in the school who was afraid of what 25 other kids thought thought of, of him that's because you have taken those steps you pushed yourself outside of the the comfort zone so you have earned the you've earned your place running your podcast one day the doors are just going to blow open and the walls that you have built up in your head as being the spot that's my safe zone are just going to collapse. It might be a tragic incident or it might just be this clear one day you wake up and you're like, what the, like my cousin was the one that did it for me. He was just like, why do you care what people think? And I was like, what? And he goes, why do you care? You're not going to meet these people more than five minutes from now. And I'm like, you're fucking right. <laughs> I'm, we're going to the store trying to look as fancy as possible with makeup and all these things. I just want sweatpants confidence where you just walk in like, I don't care. I don't care. I'm not going to see any. How are you doing? I don't care. I, you know, I'm not going to see you five minutes from now. It's this thing that like everyone builds up this like immediate like business profile for everyone online. Immediately everyone in the world. This is me. This is This is me. Well, guess what? My personal and then my business, the one I go out and show to everybody, is exactly the same as how it is. I'll talk about farts. I'll talk about whatever. It's because when you start building up these things, they create stigmatizations. They create all this thing of fear, never truly being yourself. And it's like yeah. life is way too short for that. And when I – yeah, yeah, you want to <laughs> kind of understand a little bit more about everything. And like what yeah. I try and do is – Mental health is a big issue, not only on like people are going to have different ways to overcome different things. When I talk about the doors being blown off, everyone has that. Yeah. You can get, you could be like me and get so pissed off where you're just like, what, why am I letting this thing tell me like a little demon in the back of my head going, don't do it. Be, be afraid. Be complacent. Hold on. Let me get, I got to I got to do this. This is going to be good. Uh, <laughs> but he's like, you got to be complacent. You got to do, you got to, you got to sit down. You got to be quiet. You got to, shh, don't, don't talk. Don't talk. People won't like you. You'll be made fun of. It's like this little demon saying that. And I'm like, hold on, hold on. I have a huge problem with authority. Why are you telling me what I should be doing? I'm going to do it anyway. No, I'm going to do the opposite of what you're telling me to do. I fight it that way. But other people, you know, there are those voices and it can be scary. And it's even, I'm talking yeah. from this area of, you know, it seems like I'm, I don't have it. There are days where I'm the complete opposite, where I'm just like, oh my God, get it to stop. What is the whole thing? It's an issue and it's going to happen. Do you know, do you know the, the funny thing, and, and I love the way that, that, you just, that you described that, but the funny thing is with this, this label of kind of mental health issues and things, the truth of it is everybody, everybody has mental health. It, that's, it's almost the most obvious thing in the world to say but everybody has it so it's kind of there is not one person that's listening to your podcast there is not one single person that's walking on this planet that doesn't have some some issue some kind of self-doubt or there may be a small handful and you know all credit to those few people who've managed to wrestle with every single possible demon that could be sort of you know invading their um their mind and causing them whatever upset but for every one of the rest of us there is something about just on a day-to-day -day basis feelings um you know managing our feelings of, of inadequacy of you know we're not good enough we're not this enough we're not you know and and i just think that for every one of us it can manifest itself in some different ways anxiety um sort of you know panic stress people um create these personas we're in it we're in a lot we're in a, a world now where you know you portray as you've said a persona to the outside world on social media you know everybody does that now how many of those are authentic how many of those are genuinely 
the person that if you spoke to that person in the street the, the you know that persona would would align with the person that you were speaking to and i think there's just there's so much in the area of of people just being honest about who they are and kind of not hiding behind an image of, of that they think is better than, than the real than the real their real you know themselves you know if i you know put this pro profile photo up, up or if i post these things on social media it somehow creates a better version of myself than the real one well there's gonna there's gonna come a time when the two have to align and you have to be okay with who you are um so i think when it when we're talking about mental health it doesn't always have to be the big issues you know those that i've experienced such as um, bipolar or body dysmorphia and um, mental health issues and the impact of those on a daily basis affect all of us from anxiety walking into it walking into a, a classroom full of kids who you who, who you are kind of afraid of, of being judged um, I wouldn't really that, call that depression. I'd call that more on the lines of maybe a stage of something. I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't I, classify yeah, I wouldn't, that. No, I wouldn't call that depression, and that's not what. I, that's not what. What I. What I meant by that, but I'm saying that things like anxiety, things like social anxiety, things like, um, you know, feelings of overwhelm, of panic, of stress, of, you know, self perception, um, of of your own image body image all of those things are facets of mental health they don't have to mental health doesn't have to just mean the big labels it doesn't have to just be clinical depression or bipolar or um body dysmorphia mental health en encompasses every other aspect of all of us questioning who we are and where we fit on this crazy place you know so i just think there's something about dispelling the, the, this myth of the labels of, of mental health and and it's open to everybody to have that discussion so if you're anxious walking into a, a room full of people the anxiety is is and how you handle that affects you mentally the way that you deal with that fear you can either crumble into that fear um, and sink into it or you can do it as, as I'm surmising you've done which is to stand up to it face up to it and challenge it does that make sense it, it makes sounds... sense I'm just I, I was just waiting for you to give me a spot to hop in but um yeah go on. hop away when um you're dealing <clears throat> when you're dealing with anxiety or depression or any of the gambit, uh, the severity of it is just completely different, obviously. Anxiety, I think a lot of the issues I really have, like ignorance is bliss. When you become more aware of things, you start to become more depressed about things because you just, it's the whole idea, when I was in high school, I didn't know anything. Only thing I worried about was my anxiety of getting in front of people. And then as I became older and started doing the podcast where I'm at now, my depression more on the line hits of this unattainable unachievable thing of wanting to be able to communicate and be able to have this open-minded kind of way not just in myself but in everything yeah. i realized i had an ego issue i have a giant ego that i've always tried to you know want to be famous ever since i was a little kid but i learned to annihilate that i think that's an issue and i try and push it in the corner i reject compliments i'm like oh thanks and then move on because the idea is you sit there and accept praise that feeds it and that pays for it. And that lets you know, and that it's kind of like you hit a goal, but it's more like you want a goal that's, a, that's kind of unobtainable. One that's kind of so unrealistic where it's like, I can keep striving to get there because it'll keep you plunging forward. Most people are like, no, that's not a good way to do it. Well, here's the fun thing. Everybody is completely different. Your therapy is different from my therapy. Your way of overcoming things are different than a way of overcoming things. What really gets me is when I see somebody that creates something like a TED talk or a book or something that sells help, that sells this thing of here are the tips to get over your crappy life or all this. That might work, but what sucks is a lot of people that are dealing with this are in a, a spot where it seems like I'll accept anybody's help. I'll accept anything. Just somebody help me. I don't want to feel like this anymore. I can't live like this anymore. And it's that mindset. And then they have to pay $12.99 for a book. 
or they got to pay $10 for a TED talk, or they got to pay this and that and this and that. And I see all over Instagram, like buy this, buy that. And it's like the same thing with tarot cards or something. I'll give you a psychic reading for $3.99, $4.99, $5.99. You take gift cards, all this type of stuff. I'm like, can't we just give the help out? Because I feel like that, I understand you got to make money, but at the aspect think, of, well, yeah, at the no, aspect not, of people that are literally suffering, like my buddy that is afraid to leave his house yeah. because he suffers from such severe depression. And yeah. like there were times he wasn't even going to school where I'm just like, he's buying stuff online, trying to get him motivation. I'm like, just talk to me. What do you yeah. want to talk about? Clear the demons yeah. out of your head. You need to talk to a friend. You need to talk to a parent. Yeah. You need to talk to somebody. And that's, and that's, that's a huge, I mean, you know, that's a massive um, topic and it's a, it's a very, you know, it's a really uncomfortable topic when you're talking about potentially people taking advantage of those in society who are vulnerable and, you know, the commerciality around that and, and kind of people who are in a, in whatever state that they may be somehow being, um, exploited perhaps you know by these commercial sort of self-help or quick fix ideas and i think you know that's a really kind of that's that seems quite a heavy subject and what and one that you know is probably not for now but i think i try and i try and keep things simple um and and my my philosophy is this and and i hope it's in line with yours and it's it, and it's it's about sharing stories and it's about sharing experiences and it's about understanding and being able to empathize with each other. And if I share with you and other people a part of my experience and a part of my, um, yeah, my, my story, you know, the, the bits that didn't work, the, the, the parts that did, some parts will resonate with yours. You know, when you tell me about the anxiety in the classroom, I can feel I can feel that and I can, it resonates with me and I can understand it and it makes me feel as though we have that in, in common we have that connection if I tell somebody if I share with them an experience that I've had about whatever aspect of, of my own um, life and my own mental health um, issues and, and a lot of the good the good things that have happened as well I know from experience that that resonates different parts resonate with different people so people will contact me and say thank you so much for, for sharing your story because this you know it felt as though it was my story too because i've experienced this so when you take away the heaviness and the burden of the, the commerciality and the, the exploitative nature you know and really that you could talk about the exploitative nature of the world you know there is a there is a, a global thing about people in positions of power taking advantage of those that don't have it you know that's a that's a huge topic of the conversation but on a very basic human level if one person can be brave enough to share a part of their own experience their own self-doubts their own anxieties it can connect them with another person so i think whatever other warped sense of sort of you know commercial self-help that, that, that you're talking about that, that are, you know I, I'm, I'm not I'm not overly I don't like to align myself with those kind of things because because why would I they sound very dark and very negative but from my perspective if we you know you're brave enough to send me a message and say hey do you fancy coming on the podcast so you've got the balls to do that and I said yeah why not we you know we have that in common I've got a lot of respect for you having the you know just the the freedom and the open mind to contact a person in another country that you don't know and say hey do you fancy a chat that's great because we're here sharing stories there's no money being exchanged there's nobody it's not costing you anything it's not costing me anything this is just about connectivity and sharing our experiences and our views with whoever else may may want to listen to those and, and whoever may, you know some people may agree with us some people may not but there's something very simple about that and i think the more we complicate things you can dig into rabbit holes that then it's very difficult to come out of so for me and my own view on life and on things like you know the kind of topics that we're discussing i try and keep things simple because if i if i don't do that it then 
becomes very big and, and I don't have the answers. I don't, I don't think, know. I don't think anybody really has answers to anything, to be honest with you. The amount of information that's come out on nutrition, fitness, anything, and then 10 years later, it turns out to be wrong and it's the actual other way. You're like, hang on a second. I just look at stuff like, find your truth. What, what do you believe? What is your thing? Build up your perspective. We see so much on social media, so much all over the time that's showing us this thing. We run with it. And it's like, hang on a second understand it a little bit more try and figure out what it is what what is your truth you know find you know people the one thing i don't like is when people make comparisons of stuff i think that is ridiculous when people are like well your life could always be crappy you're like in africa when those kids are starving yeah it's an issue that is a big thing but then it's like you're just comparing yourself to someone that is at a weak point in life right now why would you do that compare it to your own life what do you want to get out of things don't be jealous because somebody has a car that's 10 times nicer than yours don't be jealous because they have five houses or something figure out what can i do to get there what can i do in my life to get somewhere like that you know it's I, I it's, it was hard for me to understand a lot of things until I started diving down the rabbit hole of invisible illness, people that suffer with MS, people that suffer with severe things that are literally, they're not able to function properly. And they're this in extreme amount of pain, but since they're not missing an arm or they're not missing something that's physical, we don't understand that. We don't go, what, what do you mean invisible illness? Well, inside their intestines aren't working properly their liver shuts down, their bladder shut down. So when they try and go to the bathroom, they can't go to the bathroom properly. These types of things, having an empathy towards that, but if we don't see it, we don't know what it is and we don't care to learn about it. And that's an issue because I think the world is so basis on comparisons. Everything has to be a comparison. They have this, they have that, they have this, they have that. And that's what breeds this greed demon, whatever you want to call it, that just... Yeah wants to be jealous and bitter and spiteful and talk trash and do all these things. It's like, you, you see it with everything. I mean, even people that are starting something like starting a new job, they're jealous. Like, well, that guy, people do it in the gym all the time. I can relate that in the gym. You're looking at some dude with big ass lats or something. You're like, Oh my God, I wish I had those. I don't have those. Then you're judging yourself. The freaking gym has mirrors all the way in it. That's the biggest ego thing in the world. And they're all like showing you in a good light and stuff. Like, look at that <laughs> the muscle. I can see my muscles, my traps. And it's like, that's the issue that the world is like a gym. Everyone is just comparing, judging, trying to work out. It's why when you work out by yourself all alone, it's yeah. different than when you work out in a gym full of people because your mind's set into what you're doing. You're, there's no one around looking at you, so you don't have to worry. But then now it's become this thing where you're like, are they looking at me? Do I have to flex like this? Do I have to, let me drop the weight down 20 pounds that I can actually lift so they can see my, my, my trap muscles. Yep, there we go. And it turns into this thing. It's like when you start realizing, you just take a minute to sit and I mean, lean up against the wall and just stare at people. And notice how many people just look around and constantly are just staring at other people's stuff, seeing what they have, seeing all this type of things. Like they're going to steal something. It's not that they're going to steal something. It's that they're comparing. In their head, the little thing's going off comparing. And that's with anxiety, all that stuff. That is instilled in us just with the way as a society we're built upon. Money is more important than a life. All this type of stuff that's going on that's been functioning and how we've been working this nine to five over and over again and over and over again, it's been programmed into us. And it turns into this thing where it's like, when you get older, you're like, this is what you're built upon. And that breeds and breeds and breeds. And I'm like, what's the fix? And, and you know what? And you know what, Robbie? I opted out of that. I opted out of thinking like that because to, to be honest with you, it's just too hard and it's just too bleak and it's um it's not a helpful way for me to lead my life and it's not a helpful way for me to think like that so what i do is i've created a lifestyle that supports me to not or to, to you know to not have to um yeah to to be able to have the freedom um to, to not be pulled into those kind of, of negative thought patterns. So the way that I do that is spending time outside. The way that I do that is finding lots of, of you know, space in nature, 
uh, running, riding my bike, um, getting the hell away from all those people that you're describing down at the gym. That's not my, that's not my way. Um, I wouldn't want to go to the gym and to be, you know, that's not my tribe. And, and I think one of the things that people can do to, to help themselves is to choose, you know, do you want to sit in a place where everybody is eyeing each other up and, and you know, making those judgments about each other or do you want to say actually this isn't making me feel very good it's not a very very helpful thing for my head to to process so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a run in, in in the hills and in the woods instead so everybody has a choice and none of us are immune from that kind of judgment of others of ourselves of, of the criticism and it would be hypocritical to kind of say that you know of course I have those thoughts of course I compare you know how many books um how well my, my my first book sold compared you know everybody has those those thoughts but the way that i try my best to deal with them is to just stop is to stop when those thoughts come in and to do something that takes me away from the heaviness and the rabbit hole um of all of that stuff because it's just too messy and it's just too egotistical and it's based on insecurity and fear and one person's judgment of another is based on their own inadequacy or, or feeling of inadequacy. So if someone's comparing their, you know, their biceps to another person and they're feeling bad about themselves because the other person's got bigger biceps, it's kind of a, where, where does anybody go with that? You know, what, where does that help anybody to feel, to feel better about, about themselves? And, you know, for me, it's just about trying to lift myself up out of that place of the insecure ego and into a place where things make more sense and again it comes back to simplicity and it comes back to um just getting out of the depths of the, these kind of wrangling conversations in, in internal conversations that, that we don't have the answers to um so well understanding you know, the perspective of someone that's gonna lift and then look over and be judging somebody else's body compared to their own that is a good pressure to get you to maybe try harder or go better but also understanding that a lot of people don't want that a lot of people don't like that judging comparison i think that obviously depression all these types of things i think that if you literally go without depression um it's it's something that can hit you at any age it's not something you know not everybody gets it i know people that are 90 years old that have, that aren't are happy as a clam um, but the, the factor of is if you've never experienced what that is, then good on you. But it's not something that you're free of until you die, because it is something that could hit you at any point. And we're seeing that with people that are experiencing in their forties or fifties or something yeah. mostly because they're being woke up to a lot of things. But when it comes to anxieties, all these stress and all these, uh, I would say sparks are these whatever inflammatory things that come at you and create this ego or whatever this problem is in your head where it's like, I'm afraid or I'm better than them or all this type of thing. Consider it like an amplifier where you see all little knobs, little dials on it. Everyone's got one of those things is cranked up a little bit higher than the rest. For me, the depression one's up there. The anxiety one is back down to a low. I don't really have that big of an issue like I did back in school, but those knobs are constantly shifting. The way is to figure out where's the, where's the, where's the radio dial where there's not that bleed in of channels, but that focus, that one you want to hear, Oh, this is the rock station. I like this one. This is where I want to fit. It's finding that balance. And you yeah. find that balance through multiple things from meditation, from lifting, from running, from a good yeah. book, anything. And that's, and that's, it's, it's trying. I think that's, that's the key is trying many different things and trying some of the things that you are afraid of. I think that's the key is trying some of the things that, that you would imagine. Oh, I don't, Oh God, I couldn't do that. I could never try. I could never, I, me running. Yeah. I could never do that. You doing a podcast it, It's at one point you and I had a choice to try doing something that was uncomfortable. You know, I'm a lot older than, than you. You know, you found this and you found your strength to do that, you know, in your, you know, far sooner than I did. But still, the process is the same. It's trying something and seeing how it fits. And, and if it fits, that's great. And something's helped you. And like, so something's helped me. And various things can help. 
you know it doesn't have to be just one linear um you know or running's fixed all my mental health problems that's not my story actually that's not the end of my story um you know there's a lot more and it's and it's a lot more complex than that so there isn't this kind of you know one solution fits all and, and hey everybody nobody should be on prozac anymore because just run it's not that simple and it's not that straightforward but what it is and what the message i think that's important is just trying something trying something trying something new that perhaps scares you a little bit or challenges you or puts you out of that comfort zone because you never know that thing might be one of the things that that helps you to create that that feeling of self-containment of um a self-belief that may be the thing that gives you the building blocks you know to kind of make you this whole per, you know a, a more complete person and for you to feel as though the bits make sense now whereas they didn't before um, so I think for me it isn't that there's, there's this like magic formula for fixing you know mental health issues whatever the label and however big or small they are it's simply that for all of us we can take make active choices to try different things to hear about other people's experiences to talk about them as, as you do do on your podcast to read about them um you know there are, there are ways we can i can i can read about somebody somebody else um who's taken climbing um they found their thing they've then gone on to summit mount everest that's not my way i've got no ambition to, to summit everest i'm not interested i don't like the cold weather that's not my thing but that's theirs but i'm interested in reading and hearing about other people trying and exploring and finding out what works and sometimes and I think, you do just get lucky like somebody says something that you hear or so you read something in a, a certain way they phrased it and then it just clicks where it's like this thing like oh shit i get it i gotta maybe i should go down this and maybe i should do this you know but yeah. then there's the issue that i have a problem with is where people sell that where they go I have the tips and tricks to make your life better than it is right now. And like, I think, I think, can I just put in there? Cause I'm really keen on, on this being a kind of, you know, anything that has that vibe of being an exploitative commercial, um, venture just by definition, people should run a mile, you know, anything that comes with that kind of burden of, of, of pushiness or any kind of exploitation involved this is the answer this is the quick fix you know to be blunt run a mile that is not what what is going to help anybody and that's not what the 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 kind of the general vibe um is that i would certainly want want to to give out and i think you know anybody that's coming at, at, at this kind of at the issue of, of mental health and of, of kind of purportedly helping others by exploiting them i'm not really sure where that sits and i'm not really sure what that is um but there's something about i would run a mile from that kind of venture and that kind of attitude and, and and i don't come across it very often i'm not sure if you have more, more than i have i sounds... see it every time i open up my instagram there's somebody selling a book for 29.99 somebody selling a ted talk for 36 dollars. somebody selling you the tips and tricks of how you can listen to me and change your whole complete entire life and i'm just like looking at it like there's somebody that is in a point in their life right now where they just want someone to you know give them a minute of time and they're going to see this and they're going to, it's like watching an old lady watching TV and she's on the shopping channel and just buying bunches of shit that she doesn't need. Oh, a can opener with, it plays Bluetooth. It's like, you don't need it. You don't even have a phone that can connect to that. And it's like, you see, I see it so much. And it's like, I get it. I understand from your perspective that you want to, you need to make money and but that's the issue that i'm i have the problem with not that you're selling it it's the issue that you have the idea that Thank this you. is a route to get the money you need to survive that is and the I biggest do, I do corrupting hope, I do thing hope, you gotta let me talk a little bit you. here <laughs> 
I hope that you're using the word you gen generically and not as though, you know, I'm out there kind of trying to push. No, I'm, I'm, I would never, I'm, I'm not talking about you when I say this. I'm talking about, I just use generalizations to yeah, yeah. The, a large it, scope it, of social media. And even it's, a lot of it's not even a real profile. Half the time it's some dude that created an alternate profile with a fake name and he's trying to, you know, sell his information or sell this type of, it's like when you see Jordan Belfort or whatever that movie is, The Wolf of Wall Street. He ends up doing like speeches and stuff like Gary V. That's the issue I have where it's like there are people out there that need that and want to hear that. I, I'm not, not – don't think I'm talking about you when I'm saying this. I'm not saying that. You're, you're different. I can tell. But it's, <laughs> it's the aspect of there are people out there that won't even talk to anybody about certain things that all they want to do. And the reason why I say you're different is because throughout this whole entire podcast, you have not once tried to drop the name of a book, tried not to promote it, try not to do anything. And that is a legit me being sincere here and saying that is, yeah. that's how I can tell you're different. A lot of the times I've had conversations that have gone legit 10 minutes where it's a straight up name drop of 50 million things, buy this, buy this. And you can get all the tips if you listen to this and listen to that. That's the issue. It's like, man, selling help is this, it's this thing. It's like, I don't know. It's, yeah. And I know what, and I do, you know, I'm not naive to these things and I do see, there is a commercial world out there and, you know, there is, um, and it's a very tricky balance because, you know, you and I both have bills to pay. You and I both have, um, things that cost us money. You know, we need, you know, we have to, if I spent all my days and all my time doing podcasts where I didn't mention any of the things that I've done, if I gave away all my books and I didn't sell any of them, you know, I would be in need of some kind of charitable help myself because I wouldn't be able to sustain, you know, myself and I wouldn't have be able to, to bring my daughter up and, and feed her and, and put a roof over her head. So we all have those needs. But I think the point is, and I hope that you agree or I'm sure you do, is that there is a way of all of us coming from a really genuine place of just trying to, to not to offer give quick fix answers or resolutions to people but to, to allow them to make up their own minds and to offer our experiences and our and our you know our stories as a way of just kind of opening up those conversations that people can then choose to take from those what they wish it's not forced upon anybody it's not shoved down anybody's throat it's not done in a in a way that is you know um kind of commercially driven necessarily um all it's about is coming from a genuine place of you know trying to support people with their ventures with their stories with their with their plans to try and do good things you know you're out here you you know i love the simplicity of your podcast um in the sense of it's just about having conversations that's all it's not complicated. There's no ulterior motive. It's just you. You are one person trying to open up a conversation with other people about issues. And we're all struggling in some way. We are all, you know, in the same place. We're all on the same planet. We all have our own egos to, to manage. We all have our own issues that we, that we struggle with in life that nobody else sees. We all have those moments of insecurity. And, you know, in you doing the podcast you are trying in a way that isn't commercially driven it's just in a way to 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 put something out there that's of, of help of support to people if they choose to 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 listen good for them if they don't so what i've done the same thing in terms of sharing my story in books and that's a choice you know we've we've opened ourselves up in, in that sense and that's us trying to do something and put something back out there that comes from you know i would hope um a, a genuinely you know positive place and i think generally positive things tend to come back if you put out stuff with the right motivation with the right intention generally you get a lot of positivity back um if i were to go on to you know um podcasts and just push 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 the, the books that i've written and talk about nothing but you know i've written this and i've written that and it's got you know it was translated into this language and that language you know 
I'm not really sure where that would take anybody and I'm not really sure how helpful that would be. What I would rather do is to um, share the fact that I am an ordinary, normal human being with normal issues like everybody else has. And then for people to see if any of those things align with their own experiences and they can then choose to, you know, maybe some things they might try some of the stuff that I've tried out they might try to do a bit of running it might not work for them but in sharing and opening ourselves up it's trying to put something good out there and that's our choice yeah and well much like kind of what I'm trying to really hammer down is the fact of like when you look at the idea of like when I kind of understand why we were when we were talking um you're kind of trying to hop in and stuff. It seems like I, it might have been an attack. And trust me, out of the severeness of my heart, it was not like that. I wasn't, I did not mean that towards you. But that's what most people think is because that is just instilled with us with how society has gone in a way. We've seen so many people be taken down for things. We've seen so much that's been shown to us. But the idea is if I gave you the opportunity or if I gave most people the chance to, Oh, you could either make money by giving out this information or you could save somebody's life. Everyone is going to be like, I'd rather save somebody's life. I'd rather save somebody's life. I imagine saving somebody's life is so much more valuable. But that big question's never in our heads. It's, it, it's this, this, this thing of what can I do to try and make a living? What can I do to do this? And that's what I want to get eliminated, which is really crappy because the world has been so built upon and thrusted into money. Back in the day, you didn't give a crap about paper. You didn't give a crap about a bill. Back in the day, you were trying to feed your family. You were trying to survive. There's a way to prioritize for most people and start sparking in generations where we don't have to prioritize money over a human life. Because there's a question I could ask, which I've been talking about a lot, is if I offered a random person, not you, just a random person, $10 billion, you get $10 billion, but one person that you don't know is going to die. Most people are like, fuck it, take the 10 billion. Are you kidding? I don't know that person. There's That's where the hasteness, there is a kind of quick pause where it's like, there's a person that's going to die. But $10 billion, and I don't know the person? Eh, might be someone that deserves it. And then it goes to that. That's the elimination you got to think of. That's mm-hmm. what I'm trying to understand more is like we hold these things, you know, objects, all these things, materials, so fucking valuable and so precious to us because they're ours and we own them and they cost money and all these things. And it's like you shouldn't, because people always bring up the example of, you know, if you're rich, it just helps with creating happiness. Let's let's not let's not worry about that anymore. Let's stop trying to think that money just because buying a new shirt or buying this can help us out or make us happier. There's got to be a way to fix that. There's got to be a way to be more positive, and there's got to be a way to restructure ourselves a little bit where we value other things over the dollar. We value something yeah. else, and yeah. whether that's you writing something and somebody reads it and runs with it, whether it's me saying something on a podcast and somebody hears yeah. it and runs with it there's something out there that is more important than money to human life. But at the same time, it's also helping people. There's that good ass feeling that after, even if you buy a shirt, you feel good. You feel fresh. You feel like, Hey, I'm ready to take over town, but helping somebody out where afterwards like, thank you so much. Like, seriously, like even when I help a woman get groceries into her car, I help a, a guy open up the door or something feel good you feel like damn now i can do some bad shit like you know there's that there's that little thing but it's like hey i did something and that that affected that person it's that one small little act that you can do that actually plays a giant part in the yeah. grand scheme of things and i really like your you think very deeply about about these things and understandably so because these are these are enormous kind of why is the world like this questions that all of us surely uh, you know if if we opened up the kind of um you know this spider's web of those kind of questions oh my god you know where does that take any of us why does inequality exist you know why is it this this kind of corporate capitalist you know the haves and the have-nots why does that exist if I started to to go down that down that route, you know, I'd very I'd very soon come to a very dark 
um, tunnel and I don't have the answers but um, and I don't understand um, the the unfairness I don't understand the the reason the world has has gone that way but what I do believe is that there is a there is a shift in our thinking about things and about the, the the value of things and the value being different to a monetary value um and i do believe that is happening and i think just with and it happens on a very small level and i, I do believe it's happening on, on on a on a bigger level too and i think it has to because if all that we're ultimately bothered about is the dollar or you know the pound signs we're all going to get very, very sad very, very quickly. And, and I think it's been proven that, you know, people, you know, the old anecdotes of people who have won the lottery have ended up, you know, being very manically depressed and they've ended up, you know, blowing it all and being more miserable than they were before. Money doesn't equal happiness. And there are other things that, that, that should and mean more to us than that in the pursuit of, of itself. And I think for me, sometimes and it happened this morning actually one of the things that matters to me so much about the books that i've written and the stories that are based on my life these are not things that have been made up this is my story about the life i have lived for, for 42 years that, that i've shared and somebody posted something on on twitter um, and it was the loveliest thing for this for this woman to say and i read that at 10 past seven this morning and she made me um so thankful that i had shared that story because it, it resonated with her and it mattered to her i would rather receive those kind of messages from people who have connected in some way not to me necessarily but to some of my experiences than kind of run down this the commercial um corporate route if i wanted to be a wealthy person let's be honest i, I kind of made a bit of a, a wrong turn leaving a legal career i left my legal career um when i was two years qualified to set up a fitness studio in an old chicken shed and i ran that for five years broke even um after about two of those years sold the chicken shed five years later that was not about the pursuit of money that was me turning my back on this on the pursuit of money to do something that i felt was worthwhile finding the pursuit of happiness yeah you know and for me that was by turning a chicken shed into a fitness studio and and, and i got such a lot of reward from that you know i felt as though my contribution to those individuals who came to that chicken shed studio mattered and for that moment in time however long they came to to train with me i was a part of their story and i saw people gain confidence i saw women who arrived hiding themselves in hoodies and being broken because they didn't have any self-esteem leaving with their heads held high and going out and you know finding themselves in relationships where they were respected where they respected themselves they felt more about you know they had increased self-worth that mattered more to me than the money that i would have earned in a legal career that was my choice and it was interesting at the time because guess what the reaction was from many people when i was 26 when i made that decision when i left law to go and convert a, a, a dirty old chicken shed what do you think most people said you're insane yeah they did okay i guarantee you if i were to talk to you if you would have stuck in that legal career today if you would have stuck all those years into that legal career i would be talking to a completely different person yeah. it's the idea that when i say false I guess false self creates false happiness. Something you truly, there's going, like, I mean, I experience it. I'm just standing there and I'm just like, I don't like this job. I don't like what I'm doing. I don't like this thing. But then when you hop into something, even if it's a hobby, even if it's a thing, it's like, I like it. I like where I'm at. This just feels like I'm in the right spot or where I need to be. And 
a lot of people, they don't truly look into themselves to find that. They stay in something and next thing you know, like I remember I worked at a casino for a brief amount of time before the pandemic hit. I mean, before yeah. I worked there probably two months, but I remember sitting there like, I'm fucking, I'm body dysmorphic. I'm wearing a uniform. I'm like miserable. I hate this. I can't do this. And then I'm sitting there like, and all these people that had been there 30, 40 years had just kept coming up to me. Like, you know, we do the roundabouts. So I'd be stuck at the back door for an hour and they would just rotate. They do this thing called um, roaming, which is just roving around the whole entire casino, just showing your presence basically. Mm -hmm. And all these people were coming up to me and they were talking to me like, so what, did you go to school? I'm like, yeah, I went to school. What'd you go for? Went for psychology and chemical addiction. And they're just like, okay, okay. Um, what do you, what do you plan on doing in life? I'm like, this is it, I guess. And they're like, well, no, this isn't you. This isn't what you're meant to do. Like, what, what do you want to do? And I'm like, I don't know. I do this and do that and do this. They're like, why don't you, you know, maybe, cause you don't want to be stuck here. I've been here 30 something years. And I could tell you, I'm only in it for the pension at this point. Like I'm not happy, not I'm miserable, but it pays the bills. Do you want to just say it pays the bills? And that's when it hit into my head, like, fuck, how many people are just trying to pay the bills? Oh my God, are we all just trying to pay the bills? Like, where's the happiness? Where's the factor? And that's what really kind of blew some doors open for me. Where I was like, damn, I was like, that's where you see homeless people that look happy as hell, but they're broke. They don't have anything. And it's like, how are you so happy? And I remember I asked one of them one time, like, dude, how are you so happy, man? He just goes... <laughs> Am I homeless or am I an expert minimalist? Because honestly, I don't have any <laughs> possessions I care about. I don't have anything that means so much to me where I would cry and break down or whatever. I have some stuff I like, but nothing that's going to hold me and tie me down. I can go wherever I want and do whatever I please. Yeah. And I'm just like, all right. Like it kind of hits at a level of which value of perception do we all have and understanding that and being able to show people or talk, tell people and it comes off when you talk like this or something, which upsets me is when people come at it, like I'm the prophet of the Lord and I have the information to give you and all this. I've seen it. And I'm like, God, like that's so ego. Holy crap. Like you're the chosen one. Really? Is this a karate movie? I think in, in essence, yeah, we, I think we agree. I'm not good with authority either, by the way. I've got many stories I could share with you about my, um, especially in my legal career, not good with authority. And that is not a good place to be when you're not good with authority. It's good if you're a lawyer. Well, not if you're a trainee lawyer, not if you're a junior lawyer. It's really not a good place at all. But um, but yeah, I'm not good with that either. And I'm not, I'm not good with people kind of, yeah, making judgments. They know something that the rest of us don't know. or They've got the answer or, or they're convinced you should do this, you should do that. All of us have choices. And I don't think it's for, for any of us to kind of push that or put that on another person. And I think all that I guess I'm trying to do um, and something that matters a great deal to me is to... I guess share with other people what my choices have been and what the consequences of those choices have been. And some of them have been great and amazing and incredible actually. And some of them have been terrible, awful choices. You know, it's not as though I have all the answers and I've made every single, you know, choice and it's, it's and I've hit the jackpot every single time I've made massive mistakes too. But I think in sharing you know, some of our journey, it kind of, for those people who might hear that or read that or listen to that, they can ask questions of themselves. So it isn't for another person to kind of say, if you do these things, then it will make your life better or you will be richer or you will be whatever. It's for each person to, to, to question, you know, for those people who, who are happy in a legal career, that's great. That's their, that's their story. That's their, um journey chosen yeah that's their journey and that's fantastic and i'm sure there are many many people who love getting up and going to the office every day and who thrive on that on that um on the challenge and on the the sort of the intellectual challenge of it but it wasn't for me um and i think you know that's just being honest it's just not who i am it's not it's not me that's not the lifestyle that i want to have it's not the way that i want to spend my days um, that's not what my contribution to the world is. It's not what I want it to be. I don't want that to be my legacy. I don't want it to be my 
the thing that that, that defines me um, when well, what, I'm gone. What, what you value is um, something. I'll give you two, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you two routes here. Do you want the <laughs> Do you want the really the the one I the my Twitter answer or do you want the um the other example that I could go to is kind of a little bit more deep. I'll give you both, but which one do you want to hear from? Um, give me the Twitter one first. Start I me off. I said the Twitter answer, which is actually kind of a little bit serious. It goes, oh, I, I don't remember. It goes, um, fame. It's like it talks about fame a little bit, but it's like I would rather be remembered by few forever than millions for a second. And it really puts in the perspective yeah. of you want to create more of a bond. I'd rather have one person yeah. I can trust for the rest of my life and know that they will always be there whenever I need them. And yeah. a million people that will say they'll be there and won't show up at the doorstep. Yeah. And then a really good example of it's kind of the, it's the second one now is the fact of everyone talks about everything in your life takes a little bit of like your soul is like pixelations or pixels. Everything you do takes a little bit off those pixels yeah, and then it never comes back and never rebuilds you whole. Well, there's a way to put those pixels and slowly start putting, putting new stuff on. I mean, hey, let me build you back up. And that's what you're kind of saying with, you know, with trying to tell your story as well as you don't value the money. It's nice, but it's also about like, imagine you being able to say like, I helped somebody that feeling that yeah. Like, that's why I do this. I don't, I don't care if it be, ever becomes anything. What I care about is I like the feedback that I get yeah. from it from someone who was talking to me was the aspect yeah. of like, thank you. Cause I feel ready to take on the day. I feel charged. It's that it's like, is it better to start showing that there's this other side and it's more times than not that there's good stuff out there. There's fun to yeah. be had. It doesn't have to be an attack. It doesn't have to be these things. But everything we're shown and everything we see on Facebook, World Star Hip Hop, anything you want to talk about is always fights or it's always people yelling and screaming at each other and some woman at McDonald's screaming about, oh, you didn't get my order right and then throws food at her. And it's like you see so much of that all the time. You start to be like, maybe it's safe if I don't talk to people today. Maybe if it's safe if I don't yeah. even give anybody the time of day. I had watched like three years ago a woman on a bus crying. And nobody said a fucking word. Nobody said one thing on this packed bus. Everyone just thought she was insane. And then as people were leaving off the bus, I just, you know, walked up next to her holding on to the thing was just like, hey, are you okay? She's like, no, somebody in my family just died. And I don't want to go into her whole personal thing. But I was like, do you want to talk? Like, are you okay? I understand what you're going through. Like, I've lost people too, but I'm not trying to relate myself to your positions. I'm just here so you can talk, so you can yeah. vent that out because that's what we need to do. Yeah. What the problem is, most people bury that down inside and they never release it. And then when they're in therapy, when they're like 40 years later, and it's like, why do I have all these emotional problems? Well, you never released the shit. You never talked about it. You buried it down. And now you have built up these giant walls that we have to bust down so we can get to that issue. Yeah. And I really like you. I really like your description of the, the, the pixelation. I think that that works really well. And I think all of us have um, a pool of energy and you can kind of, that can either be a really positive, powerful energy that we share and we, we give that out. And I do believe that that, that is like, um, you know, you, you can sense that, you know, when you made contact with me, I had no idea who, who you were, but something about the way that you made contact, it felt to be really authentic, really genuine, coming with a really strong, positive energy. And I think, you know, you can choose to, to be like that. And, and, and I, I would hope that is my choice too. And I, and, and I think that kind of, attracts other <laughs> kind of energies that, that, that actually come together and, and just make it you know in a tiny tiny way just make it a little bit better um <clears throat> because as you and I are here and you know we can talk about all these things we don't know the answers to and all of them why does this happen and why does that happen on the very basic level of the pixelated images and, and the energy if there are enough people 
trying to do the right thing, trying, you know, being the person on the bus that's talking, that asks the woman, I would love to think, and I believe I would ask her, I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't feel okay not asking someone who was in distress what the problem was that wouldn't be okay with me and I would like to think that if there were two people on the bus and I was one of them you were the other I would be the other person that would have asked the woman if she was okay I would like to, to think and I, and I believe that that's who I am but if enough people are out there just trying to do their thing you know taking away the the kind of the pressures that we all have and the corporate commerciality of it all i've got to imagine that builds up a, a strength and a kind of an, an energy that we can all feed off and that helps us and it helps other people and that isn't in a contrived kind of hey you guys we've got all the answers kind of way it's simply a here we are just like everybody else trying to do something that we that we think matters that we think is a good thing and that we think is is opening up conversations with other people with other human beings about things that really affect all of us so i think when you boil it down to the pixelation and and i would use you know like the, the energy force we are we only have so much of it and you can either use it positively or not and i think it's it's our choice to use that in a positive positive way yeah, I definitely think um, obviously the easiest answer for a lot of people is to, it's kind of what we've been built upon when it cr comes to creating a company is easily, you know, trying your best to get ahead, even if it means knocking somebody else down a peg to get there. It's not, that's not, oh, it might be the easy answer, you know, stepping on somebody to get to the top or whatever, but there's an, a way better way and a way more fulfilling way of just raising everybody at the same yeah. time you know, that water level can rise together. We can all reach to that one boiling point or one, one, whatever the top is. And it kind of is the idea of charity, but the old school way of what the mentality was that you're donating to people that might be less fortunate. Um, but now it turned into this thing where you donate just so people see you donated. And it's like, you're doing it for the appraise. It's like, man, that's just, that's where I see where a lot of people, like if I look on social media and people are always posting about like, I did this and did that. It's like, did you do it because you wanted to, or did you do it for the like? And that's where I think my issue with social media falls in is like, we have this inherent need or inherent whatever thing to care about each other, to all love each other and all want to survive and, mm -hmm. you know, be a tribe mentality. But it's been, kind of forced down and put in the way 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 back of the shelf like the old school saltine crackers that are back there collecting dust you don't ever touch except maybe for christmas or thanksgiving that happens once a year and everything else at the forefront is just this way of this is me 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 for a lot of people that is not saying it's for you or me you're just saying for a lot of people and that's something that needs to be looked at and if you do it that way, you prioritize that over something else, you might need to work on it. You might need to try and fix that. And it is interesting that you say that because, um, you know, obviously there are a few years um, between us and with me being, um, you know, a few years older than, than you, Robbie, to add to my legal career in the chicken shed business, I also worked for a charity for, for four and a half years. I ran a volunteering group at a, at a charitable organization of people who were out of work. And I was doing that whilst I was writing my first book. So um, it kind of paid some of the bills whilst I was on this pursuit writing my books. Um, and that was one of the most interesting and worthwhile things I've ever done. And I loved working there and I loved the, the people that I worked with. And again, I got a massive sense of satisfaction from the, just the day-to-day -day stuff. It, you know, there's nothing big and shiny, no, no posts on social media. It's just you crack on, you do your thing, you make a difference, you smile at somebody and you have a conversation with them um, and, and, it, and it makes them feel a bit better about, about themselves. And, and, and that was a, was a brilliant thing. And I think from there, it's my view that you, it doesn't always have to be about giving in a monetary sense or in, or in a charitable sense if you give something of yourself if you give your if you offer up your time as you are doing on your podcast as I am doing now if you offer up your experiences 
we're giving we are still giving we're contributing to something we're contributing to discussions we're contributing to a feeling of kind of you know positivity of there is another way where we're trying to put out there that there is another conversation to be had about where we've all gone so fucking wrong and everything is is about um the, the stuff that doesn't matter and and why is that the case so i think there are many other ways of giving um you gave your time and your your thought to the woman on the bus um, I gave four and a half years of, of my time to a charitable organisation. I got a very meagre wage in return. It was it was a it was a very small wage, but I was paid for that work, and it mattered a lot to me. So there was a, there was a commercial exchange there, albeit within the charitable sector. But there are different ways of giving, and actually, by you doing what you're doing now and me doing what I'm doing now, we are giving. Um, and I think that's that's kind of a quite a nice way of looking at you know, what people can do to contribute and perhaps turn the tide and, and, and make things feel a little bit better, you know, in, in, a, in a small way and sometimes in a big way for other people is just to, to do that thing, you know, from the person who was, who was afraid to talk in class, you now have a podcast, you've opened up the conversation, therefore you're giving of your energy and your experiences and your time just as I am doing in the stories that I've shared and the books I've written, I don't believe that that really, you know, we could do very much more in terms of trying to contribute to that to that feeling of, you know, questioning um, maybe some of the things that that we, that we both think have gone a little bit wrong, and I'm sure that other people do uh, about how we all we all live and how we all we all conduct ourselves. So, you know just as you may get one comment in response to, to every podcast or you may get many i may get one email from somebody who's read my book that matters because that person has received something from us they've received just a little part of our energy of, of our contribution and it's for them to do something with that and and that's why the comment that i got this morning um, meant so much because that's kind of the exchange that happens if we give something you know with the best of intention with with goodwill um, and then somebody says thank you for that to me that feels like a fair exchange and and I'm kind of I'm good with that I'm happy with that um, and I think that's where perhaps our energies kind of synced and we you know you approached me to do it and I agreed to do the podcast because it's kind of we're coming from that similar kind of ethos um, of both of, of, of giving something of ourselves a lot of it's like um I think when you ask people you know immediate pay in their mind they go immediate relief immediate freedom it's not immediate freedom it's not immediate relief it's temporary it's like a putting a Band-Aid on top of a scar. You're not healing the scar. It doesn't go away. It just comes out of your perception or your eyesight. The cool thing is, is when you talk about getting a comment on something that you create, that can happen a year from now. Somebody can yeah. read that book and find it a year from now. That's not immediate. That's not immediate pay. That's not immediate now. That's thing that builds up over time. I had that happen with a spinoff I used to do with this podcast where I would focus on specific topics. And I did one called Operation Cold Feet about a certain government project that was about getting secret information off of an Arctic ice base that kept floating into different territories where everybody was like, it's in my territory, so I'm going to get it. Oh, no, it's in my territory. And they, it was so close to you can't just send people to go get it because it's in their territory and I did a whole thing on it not even thinking anything of it just posted up on YouTube next thing I know I get an email and a comment from somebody that's like I wrote the biography on the person that was involved in this experiment and was involved in this you know this mission and thank you for doing them such a service and that was a year later and I'm like well that's fucking and it was like so that's what you got to understand is once you create the mentality of it doesn't need to be right now yes. it can be later you start yeah. you start understanding a little bit more you know you're gonna have people come to you years from now that are gonna be like your book did this and you're just like thanks like i remember when i created that i remember what i was in but it's that immediate satisfaction that a lot of people want some life doesn't work out that way as have we all no. know yeah and and so you, you never know what's you know you really can never predict 
you know, what's going to come up in the future. And if you'd have said to me um, during my 20s when I was in a law firm or when I was in my um, late 20s, early 30s in the, in the chicken shed fitness studio or, you know, when I was at the point when I was about to, um, you know, have my my daughter get get pregnant have my little girl and then face the prospect of coming off um Prozac having been on it for, for 12 years and being terrified um that, that I would be okay I could never have predicted uh, what would happen further down the line and all of those tiny steps were necessary to lead me onto the onto the next one so it was necessary for me to to leave the the legal profession it was necessary for me to to have that chicken shed fitness studio and to 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 get a really kind of one-to-one -one level of of satisfaction in what I was doing and, and, and what I was putting out there and that led on to to other things which eventually turned into um to the first book and and, and then another um and just a feeling of sharing our experiences and, and I could never have predicted that so people really can't you shouldn't second guess what is or isn't going to happen around the corner because the tiny thing that, that you think nothing of now could turn into a, a really big stepping stone or it could turn into nothing but you know it's kind of you said it <clears throat> when we started the podcast what's what have you got to lose really what have any of us got to lose in you know take the step whatever that step is try that new thing um you know contact that person see if they want to chat on your podcast you know have that conversation because you never know you know what the outcome of any of that is going to be and, and if it's a positive thing um, and it's done with with the right intentions of, and, and with a good you know with an open mind and a good heart you know you can only imagine that you're putting out positive energy so so that will kind of you know come back at some point in some way and and you know I believe I've experienced that many times over well, I think I've wasted enough of your time for sure. You've been going on for almost an hour and a half, but please, that's why I told you, I was like, save a little bit more time because I know we're going to have a good talk. Um, promote your books, promote where people can find you, promote where people can get the books, everything. Oh God, this sounds, this sounds awful now on the back of all that we've just said. Um, yeah, so my my books are both available on, on Amazon. If you look for my name, Rachel Ann Cullen, um, the first one is Running For My Life. Um, that came out in 2018 and, and the follow-on for that um, is called The Midlife Cyclist. Um, yeah, if, you, if you're minded to have a look, check them out, see what the reviews say before you purchase. It may be for you or, or it may not, but, um, but yeah, just keep turning up and doing the good stuff, I think. I'm literally like, I don't read books at all, but I'm literally <laughs> going to have to read this book. I'm letting you know that. <laughs> Honestly, if you can get it on audio, it is on audio, so that may, that may, may be for you. But listen, I've, can I just say as well, Robert, it's fascinating that you're 22 and you have these kind of insights and you tr you're out here trying to do something positive. So, you know, I hope that doesn't sound too sort of, you know... Um, you're feeding the ego. You're feeding the ego. Don't do it. <laughs> I was going to say, fuck off ego. Calm down. <laughs> um, so the ego, this is not to your ego. This is to you and, and you know your spirit that comes across you know you've got balls you've you've contacted me we've had this conversation keep doing what you're doing because to be honest the world needs more of more people like you um going trying to do something um that's bigger and better than, than what a lot of people are, are, are set, kind of settling for so good on you thank you and um i appreciate everybody for listening to this episode of out of the blank podcast stay tuned for our next episode